Welcome to the channel. So on this video, what we're going to do is just create some outlines of how to do constraints in a sketch. And I'm just going to do a basic sketch and show you some of the gotchas. Again, it's not going to be an exhaustive thing. I want it to be a short video that you can use as a reference. So once again, we're in the latest version, released version of FreeCAD. And so mine is version 1.0. It's the latest download. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to create a, a file. We're going to create a part. And I've seen a lot of people asking about parts and why use parts. I use parts because it helps you to manage multiple bodies in one part. And it also helps you when you come to your assemblies. You can uh, turn parts on and off when you're manipulating things. I just find it much better organization to have multiple bodies in a part. So that's why i use it you if you don't like parts you can just create a body directly in the file and create multiple bodies and work that way i personally like the part container so next thing we're going to create a sketch and i'm just going to create it actually i'm going to create it on the xz plane just because i can first thing that i want to point out is if you use this button when you don't have any geometry on there, you're gonna make these numbers go very small. If you create your sketch when it's very, very small, it's gonna cause you all kinds of problems when you come to make it the size, the dimensions that you want it to be. You do things like turn it inside out or flip it around, and it can be very frustrating. So the first thing to check when you're doing your sketch, you don't have anything drawn, just check down here what these dimensions are because this size, this is 174 by 100. That tells me that when I start drawing lines, they're gonna be a, a reasonable size. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a shape. I'm just gonna create it like this and I'm intentionally not gonna make it square and I'm intentionally not trying not to have the default constraints show up. So I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to leave that there. And now why did I do that? So what I want to do is I want to show you a couple of things about constraining. When I constrain a sketch, the first thing I do is work on the geometry, the geometric constraints, rather than working on dimensions. So I want it to look the shape that it needs to be. And one of the things that I see often is this if you look at this shape it looks like it's great if i close that sketch and i try to pad it i get an error the wire is not closed wire is not closed so i'm going to cancel that i'm going to go back into my sketch how do i know that wire is not closed well if i zoom in here i can see it's white here where the wire is actually attached, it's red. So that tells me that this part is the part that's not closed. Sometimes if it looks closed and you don't realize that it's white, the other way to do it is just pull a line and see, are they attached? Now what I do, if I have them directly on top of each other, and you can sometimes be left this way if you've deleted constraints that were over constrained and you just go oh, okay i'll just delete all those over constrained ones you sometimes leave this same situation now what i usually do is i just select that and then i just hit this coincidence and now you see it went red that means they are attached so from a geometry standpoint let's remember i'm just going to center everything let's remember that we have to tie the whole sketch to the center point. So we, somehow it has to be tied there. Now you can do that either by attaching it to one of the axes, or you can do it with a distance from that um, center point. So, but you do have to have the whole sketch tied to this center point. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this horizontal and vertical constraint. I'm just gonna go around my shape. I'm gonna hit my lines like that i'm going to get them all to go vertical 
or horizontal, depending on which they're most like, is what it will do. Now I've got the shape that I want in a sort of um, vertical, horizontal fashion. And then what I want is some symmetry. So I want this, picking those two points and that axis, I want those to be symmetrical. And somebody just asked me if they could use symmetry if they have everything um, vertical and horizontal. So the answer is yes, you can. And what it's going to do is it's going to make that symmetrical. So now, because this is horizontal, these parts are also symmetrical. But notice they're not aligned this way. And this is not symmetrical because this one is not attached to that in a straight line. So if I want to constrain this, I can make this symmetrical. Or I can make a dimension from here to here, which will then lock it from here. Um, so the easiest way to do it is if I take this point and this point and I make those symmetrical, it's going to automatically line them up now up and down together as well. So now I have a symmetry from here to here, a symmetry from here to here, which equally makes the bottom symmetrical as well. So I've got two symmetrical constraints for this shape and it's going to hold the whole thing symmetrical. So now what I need to do is I need to somehow lock this thing in in its height. And I can do that simply. Um, I can take one of these and tie it to there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a dimension now because I've, I've locked all my geometry in where I want it to be. I'm going to take a dimension. When I hit that dimension and I move away here, it's automatically lining that up with the center point. I didn't click on the center point, but it automatically will go there. So that will lock the top of that to that center point. So you can't move that up and down now. Now I can give this a dimension. So I can go here and dimension this side. And that'll give me, that'll lock this piece in. And I've locked this piece in. Of course, I want to lock it this way. So I can go back. If I didn't exit the dimensions to show you how it's locked, I would have kept that dimensioning on there. One thing that can be frustrating with the new dimensioning is it will automatically try and dimension an angle. So if I try and dimension this shape and I go too close to that guy there, it's going to try and make it an angle from that line because I'm going to hit that line. So what you want to do is keep that out here. Now, if you go different positions, you're going to get different kinds of dimensions. So I'm just going to pop it out there so that locks it up and you can already see that my shape i'm going to right click out of that my shape is all now locking up so this can't move this can't move this still moves up and down and this still moves in and out so now i have a choice i can dimension this which will give me the size across down that'll lock that and then finally we need to lock the height so I can lock this and I have a fully constra constrained sketch. So work through it gradually, watch your geometry, keep trying the lines, use symmetry where you can, but remember you have to be located relative to this center point. Otherwise it's not gonna fully constrain. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you with your constraints, you can actually go through this list of constraints with filters. So if I take a look at these filters, I can filter by different types of constraints. So right now everything is switched on. So I can create a filter that says, just show me the horizontal vertical, for instance. So if I go here and I select horizontal vertical, take off that coincident. And then I just, view that now i can only see the horizontal and vertical in this list all the constraints still show up in the sketch but in this list i can just see those horizontal and vertical so if i wanted to go in and say where is this constraint i just click on it and you can see it highlighting right there 
Unfortunately, the constraints themselves don't zoom. They don't get bigger, but that area does. So, so I can see which constraint here um, is each constraint. So that one's the one here. And I can, with that, I can delete a specific constraint. So if I'm trying to get rid of a constraint, I can highlight it in this list and then I can delete it. I can also choose to hide all of those constraints or I can choose to show all of those constraints. I'm going to turn that filter off and I can hide everything or show everything. So those are good things to know when you're creating constraints. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. It's very short, very sweet, to the point, help you to get started with constraints. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a question uh, below, a comment and a question. Make sure if you haven't subscribed to subscribe to the channel and share this video, like it, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Those things all help to get other people to be able to see this video. By all means, if you want to join us on Patreon, you can do that. If you want to join us on the channel here, you can become a member. Uh, all of those get early access to my videos and help me to continue to make more and more videos. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll look forward to making the next one. Thanks.